Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode. I am Professor Tomney, and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at carboxylic acid reactions. So the various reactions that carboxylic acids can undergo, that is what we will look at on the channel coming up right now. Okay, thank you so much for joining us today and using ChemComplete as your lecture series of choice for learning organic chemistry. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first type of reaction, and sometimes I even hesitate to classify this in the realm of reaction because it's so simplistic, but it technically is a deprotonation. So if you've been following along in the carboxylic acid series so far, you obviously know that carboxylic acids are acidic due to their resonance conjugate base forms. And one of the things that we can do is we can expose the carboxylic acid to some sort of base. So let's just use hydroxide as an example here. And once we have hydroxide, the hydroxide will act as a base to come take this acidic proton. These electrons will come and create a resonance stabilized conjugate anion right there. So is this a reaction? I mean, technically you've broken bonds and you've got electrons moving around, which is the definition. However, it is very simplistic compared to a lot of other things that we see. So deprotonation is the first example. So the next thing is acyl chloride formation. So some of this starts to lead into the next major unit, which we talk about as carboxylic acid derivatives, meaning different organic functional groups that derive from a carboxylic acid and would have some similar reactivity as a carboxylic acid. Okay, so on the top of that list are acyl chlorides. And you can take a carboxylic acid and when you expose the carboxylic acid to the SO2, um, the SOCl2 reagent, that will end up giving you the acyl chloride. So it's SOCl2. A lot of times you'll see some sort of a solvent down here. So um, one of the common ones is chloroform. Okay, just don't get confused. That's not the actual reagent being used for the transformation here. That's just the solvent. And then what you end up with is you've got the heart of the carboxylic acid chain. And then instead of the OH, you've got the chloride group there. Okay. This is actually a very popular reaction because what you can do is you can take the carboxylic acid and when you change it into a chlorine, this becomes a very good leaving group. And when you've got a very good leaving group, you can substitute all sorts of other things in there to make a variety of different functional groups. So you could substitute an alcohol in in order to get an ester. You could substitute an amine in in order to get an amide and so on and so forth. And hydrides, there's lots of different options. Okay? So acyl chloride formation, definitely an important reaction that you may see coming up again and again. Now, speaking of esters, it is possible to do an ester formation from a carboxylic acid. So what you would do is you are actually going to undertake the very first step that we talked about at the beginning of this lecture, which is a deprotonation step. Okay, so if I subject the carboxylic acid to a base first, that will deprotonate it and put it into that O- form. Then that O- can be used as a nucleophile and as long as I have some sort of a relatively small group here, so I'll just do CH3I, okay? Um, this can behave as a nucleophile, come in and displace the iodine, and then what I end up with is going to be the corresponding ester. So I would have O, right? That O minus attacked the CH3 and kicked the iodine off. And so there you go. Now we've got an ester functionality in place of it. Okay, so base followed up with a relatively simplistic alkyl halide. So meaning methyl primary, maybe some secondaries you could get away with, but this incoming group is still a relatively bulky nucleophile with all that other stuff there. 
Okay, and then we've got amide formation. So an amide would be a nitrogen-based group instead of the OH group on the other side of that carboxylic acid there. Okay, so for amide formation, you would, again, start with your carboxylic acid. Now, in the amide formation, you cannot simply use the uh, amine that you want to replace the OH with. So you have to use that amine along with a separate reagent. And we'll talk about that in a second. So let's go ahead and say that the uh, amine that we're going to use is CH3NH2. And the reagent that you want to use is DCC. And DCC stands for dicyclohexyl uh, carbodamide, I think, something along those lines. So I can give you the structure. It would look like the following. So dicyclohexyl means two cyclohexanes, and then you've got a nitrogen double bonded to a carbon, double bonded to a nitrogen, and then you have that other cyclohexyl group on the other side there. Okay, so that's the reagent. This reagent is key in getting this reaction to work here. So uh, what you get in place of that is you've got the CH3, you've got the C double bond O, and then you would get whatever your amide would be. So in this case, it would be NH CH3, right? You're going to lose one of those H's during this uh, attachment process here. And that would be the result that you would get there. So amide formation is number four. And then number five is reduction to primary alcohol. So if you have gone through alcohol lectures, this may be a review to you at this point, because it is often taught as one of the reactions when people are first studying alcohols, because it's a very convenient way to make primary alcohols, uh, provided you have an ester or a carboxylic acid. Okay, so for the reduction of primary alcohols, what you need to make sure you use is a strong reducing agent because the carboxylic acids are highly oxidized. They're very, very strong. And in order to overcome that in far as far as your reduction, you need to use the stronger reagent, which is lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, so this is always broken apart into two steps. You need LiAlH4. Some books you may very often see this abbreviated as LAH, which is lithium aluminum hydride, okay? And then number two being H3O plus. Now I'm mentioning that this is strong because there is a weaker one, which is the sodium borohydride, NABH4. That is useful for aldehydes and ketones, but it cannot be utilized effectively with carboxylic acids and esters because they have higher levels of oxidation that you have to handle. Okay, so in response to this reagent, you will have the CH3 group. Now that carbonyl is going to come down to a CH2, and then you will have the primary alcohol on the end. So if you'll take a look here, one carbon, two carbons, should be the same thing here. One carbon, two carbons. We've gone from a carboxylic acid to an alcohol. Okay, and that is it. There really are not a whole lot of reactions that carboxylic acids can undergo. It's actually their derivatives that tend to undergo more of the reactions. So that is going to sum up or conclude the main carboxylic acid reactions that we have here. And then I am going to go ahead and start looking at derivatives of carboxylic acids as part of the next lecture series. So as always, I hope that you found this useful. Drop a like on the video if it was helpful. It helps us with the algorithm. Subscribe to stay up to date with content. And I'll always try to get back to you if you leave a comment. So head on over to chemcomplete.com. There's lots of free resources over there that you can sign up for in order to help you with your studies. And if you want to support the channel, we have very affordable guides, walkthroughs on the most difficult parts of organic chemistry, and that helps support the channel and keep it going. So thank you so much for taking the time to learn with me today, and I will see you guys for the carboxylic acid derivative lectures that will be coming up next. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next time.